My name is Adara. Uh, I'm a senior security analyst. I work with uh, Don on Don's team. Um, before I bring this up, like while I bring this up, um, I'm going to have you guys raise a hand if you work with Splunk. Splunk is part of your infrastructure, like your security infrastructure, but you're not so confident in querying it and working with it to, yeah, to get the, to get visibility into your data. So I'm just going to, uh, well, the, my main point is that documentation is your best route into understanding those things, but documentation can sometimes seems very daunting because it's very deep, especially in Spunk's uh, case, uh, but really it applies to every SIM system. Documentation is super deep and it's the best route into understanding uh, how to work with those systems. Uh, so I'm just gonna take us like, give you a few things to focus on so you can work with data better in Spunk and uh, kind of a starting point as a data analyst with Splunk. So let me get to that website. Leave that on the desk. Right. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I would actually say, okay, so even if you're not just uh, specifically working with Splunk, if you're working with Curator, ArcSight, or Sentinel, or any of those big data sim, sim, sim systems, quote unquote, um, the, the first thing I would suggest that you start typing in order to work with those systems is X search reference. So for Curator, it would be AQL. That's what they call their query language. There's KQL for Sentinel stuff, Microsoft stuff. Uh, yeah, so X search reference. Let's just get into this. Uh, in Splunk search reference, the first place I would suggest you go, instead of reading all of this crap, is to go. <laughs> because, because what they do is they, they present you with an introduction page that might be advisable to read, right? But the, the gold mine is this place, the search command. So Splunk's search box, and I don't have, because I didn't have any materials prepared. Um, Splunk's search box uh, allows you to use different commands to process your data in series, right? So when you type in a word, index equals whatever, right? To get an index of your data, uh, you can then add a few words and it'll kind of look for those tokens in that index. After that, you can add more commands to process that data in series, right? And transform it into different things. So to explain this, I have to categorize commands for you. There's generating commands. Those commands are commands that generate data. So I'll just open them while I talk. Commands that generate data mean that they return a table for you that contains the data that you're trying to look at. So the most basic one is actually search. Search is the basic search filter command, it's implied in an empty Splunk search box. So if you wanna learn how to use the search command, you go to this page in the Splunk search reference. Um, it's any version of Splunk slash search reference, specifically for the search, search command is slash search. Uh, it's the most important command to understand because you can use it also in any other stage of the search, like you can, search for some data, right? And return a chunk of data. You can then use the search command again, pipe into search, right? So it would be like, let's say, because search is implied in an, in an empty box, I'll use the URL bar as a example. So to be index uh, equals windows, right? So I get stuff from the windows index and I wanna get it from a specific host, host one, right? And then, so I have a bunch of data here and I don't wanna apply further filters within this area. Let's say I wanna have, I have like a really advanced filter that I wanna apply. Let's say a regex or something, right? I wouldn't want to apply that to a big data set because the processing would take a long time and my queries would be very resource intensive. I would want to pipe that into, after the first command finishes, the next command is gonna work on the data set return from the first command. That's the concept of Splunk, basically, where commands work on the data sets you pipe into them. So you can actually pipe into another search command doing some more complicated stuff, like using in parameters, uh, like let's say source ID in whatever, right? 
And you can also use CIDR ranges. So that's for that. So search is a generating command and it's a, uh, what's it called? Uh, streaming command. So generating commands make data, streaming commands process the data as it enters them through the pipe. So search does both of those things. That's an important command to study from within this document. The next one I would, and I would really, from your perspective, write down just the names of those commands and go to the search reference and look them up. So the next one is stats. Uh, stats is a transforming command. What it means is it does nothing with uh, retrieving data. It does everything with the data that you pipe into it. So if you just put stats in on its own, doesn't have any data to work with, right? You need to have search or from, which is another generating command that I'll give an example from later, or lookup is another example. So stats takes that data, does some statistical functions to that data, and then returns a table containing those statistics. So they give some examples here uh, where you kind of start out with, let's say, again, I do uh, index equals, equals whatever, host equals some host one, right? Then I pipe the results from that into stats, right? And I can give it like a statistical function, kind of like count, means count the amount of rows that I receive by, uh, let's say event type. Just I'm just throwing around field names, not necessarily how it's gonna look like in your environment, right? Mapping those fields out is looking at the search panel on the left. Unfortunately, I don't have an example with me, but uh, yeah. So this what this um, stats command would do is count the amount of rows received for each event type in the result that was that existed before, and it can go way deeper than this. Like you can get values presented in that field in a in a list that it kind of deduplicates that list for you. So like if you want to know the unique host names received in a host field, you could do values of that field. You can return fields with different names by including an as parameter. Uh, operator like this, so like as new name, as a new name for that field. You could do averages. You could also do functions within functions, right? Stuff like that. So that's stats. And it leads me into just another short detour. Um, in stats, the functions, uh, there's many, many functions to work with. So they have a reference, a tiny reference for that. So this is a tiny, oh, it's on the same page. Okay, so this is just a link in that page. So these functions aggregate data. These functions give you multi-valued lists of stuff. Uh, so stats is extremely useful. Um, okay, if you want to- One more, one more um, thing, because we're running out of time. We okay, two sorry. More I, yeah, I'm no, it's okay. Time, so. <laughs> um, so let's see, what's the third one that I would say um, would be nice for you guys to know? So we know, just to summarize, we know to look at search uh, as a kind of a Splunk beginner and to look at stats because those two commands together would, would give you huge statistical capabilities. Um, mm, oh, tstats is like a whole, let's not open that can of words. <laughs> like I'll have to explain data models to you and never mind, not 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 now. But maybe you can come back next year and give us a whole maybe, uh, maybe talk on tstats. Uh, there's so much. Okay, so so for those of you who work with SQL, uh, where actually lets you add a quote unquote where clause from from kind of like looking like from SQL uh, to your Splunk query, but only as a, a uh, filter, like a streaming command. It does not generate data, kind of like the where clause in an SQL query. So say you you like search for something, index equals whatever, what you could do where, where something, uh, some field equals field three plus field four, something like that, you know? Uh, or you could also use functions within that, kind of like you could do with a where clause in, in an SQL query. So like uh, you could do average of, of this field greater than some value, right? So this that's that's the where command, um, and it's only usable as a streaming command. So 
this is all I could do in like five minutes. Excellent. Thank I you could so go much, Adora. But uh, there's no, no, no. Uh, really important. <laughs> if you guys, uh, just there's... before I go, if you guys have any questions, you can find me on LinkedIn. My name is Adara Rami. 